Shay Pan with Normalized Cloth and today I'd like to give you some tips and tricks for line drying cloth diapers. I have been line drying cloth diapers exclusively for about three and a half years before I finally got a dryer. But if you're looking into cloth diapering and you know that you're going to be exclusively line drying or just predominantly line drying, and especially if you live in an area like I do here in PA where the weather can be rainy, it can be humid, it can be snowing, you need to account for you're going to be able to line dry during those snowy periods, during those rainy periods. There's been probably about three times in the three and a half years that I was exclusively line drying where we had so much rain that I could not get diapers to dry. And I mean like a week and a half of just rain every day, really humid, but I cannot recommend it enough if you're going to be line drying to get flat diapers. Flats are, I mean, they're not only versatile, but they dry really well. They wash out really well, they dry really well, and you don't have to do anything super spectacular with a flat. You can just pad fold it, you know, just whoop, 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 put it in a diaper and that's it. But then you have the advantage that it opens completely up, so it washes really well and it line dries really quick. So I highly, highly, highly recommend flats if you're going to be doing a lot of line drying. And listen, using flats doesn't mean that you're stuck to just using covers either. When I first began my cloth diapering journey, I knew that I was going to need a quick dry time because I was going to start with a small stash, which meant I needed things to line dry quickly so that I knew I had the diapers available before the, all the other ones ran out. But I also couldn't get flats and even pad folded in a cover. I really struggled to get them with my daughter when I was first cloth diapering. You know, nowadays it's easier for me, but that's because I have the experience. But when I first started, that was a real challenge. So there is nothing wrong with using a pocket diaper. In my experience, pocket diapers dry just as fast as covers, for the most part. I mean, unless you have something like the Thirsty's Natural Pocket where it's a natural fiber liner instead of synthetic, the synthetic's definitely gonna dry quicker. Just use a pocket diaper or cover with a flat and you're gonna be good to go with line drying. That was how I was able to keep my smaller stash rotated even with having to hand wash and line dry exclusively. By the way, flats and pockets or covers definitely made hand washing easier. It's not that you can't use pre-folds or even all-in-ones. You're just gonna have to account for the fact that you may be waiting longer for those diapers to dry. Another thing too, if you're going to be line drying exclusively, avoid fitteds. I cannot tell you how many times in my exclusively line drying days I have had a fitted sitting around on a line inside or out waiting for it to dry and it just never dry. If you do want fitteds, I highly recommend these Thirsties only because that comes apart and this opens up completely. So getting this to line dry is so much easier. It probably takes this fitted a little bit longer than the average all-in-one to line dry. So I highly recommend if you're going to, if you're going to want to use fitteds and you're line drying, get the Thirsties or any brand that has the inserts that can unsnap so it can come apart because if this is all just one big thick sewn in everything it might be hanging on your line for like a week but you're going to hear conflicting information on how you should hang these things a lot of people will have a lot of concerns in regards to the elastics wearing so yes you do have to be careful how you hang certain things but the fact is when it comes to either covers or pocket diapers there's just not enough weight to them to put any substantial wear on the elastics no matter how you hang them i mean most of the time i still opt to hang them just just straight and half over the line. And I've done this on my drying rack too. It's It works. It puts less strain on the elastics because the weight is evenly distributed, but there's not even anything pulling on it anyway. I mean, look at the difference of the diaper when I'm holding the bottom of it and when I release the weight. Do you see the elastic stretch? I don't. So the thing is, I have hung these things for over three and a half years by all kinds of different ways. I mean, I have done everything from hanging them by just the corner tabs so that I could stretch line space, to fit more, I mean, I have hung them like this, I have hung them like this, I have hung them like this, and a lot of people will suggest you hang it sideways. Well, when it comes to pockets and, and covers, it doesn't matter. Honestly, if you ask me, especially if you're line drying, I didn't just line dry diapers exclusively, by the way, that was everything. Eventually I run out of line space if I'm trying to do laundry for a family of seven. So a lot of times I don't have the luxury of space to hang everything like this. So hanging things by the tabs, that happened a lot. And you know what? Now there's Elastics 4. If you are going to be line drying exclusively though, I heavily recommend getting yourself a drying rack. I love this thing. Especially if you're doing 
flats and especially if you're a stickler for how your flats look. So how can you hang dry your flats? Well, you can line dry them like this for compactness. You can line dry it just by the corner. I've done that before, but I found even when you hang dry them, even taut, like so, you can end up when it's wet, it pulls in the middle and you can end up with wonky corners. Now that doesn't bother everybody, but it certainly bothers me, especially because I hate wonky flats. So a lot of times what I would do is actually hang them in half. But the problem is when you hang them in half, that's taking up that whole line space. Drying it draped in half didn't make the dry time any significantly longer. It still dried really quickly. My issue was just how much line space it was taking. And that's why I appreciate my drying rack. But then the nice part is too, is that, you know, you can hang your flat there and then you can just drape the cover or pocket diaper that was in it right next to it. And I was usually able to use this one rack and fit most of my diapers from my wash. I think I only paid like 12 bucks for that thing and it's probably been the best $12 I ever spent next to my Whitmore clip and drip, which by the way, if you don't have one of these, you should get one. They're great for cloth wipes, they're great for inserts, they're great for socks, they're great for anything. I've hung everything and anything off of it and the clips are nice and strong. And this thing has been exposed to the elements for a really long time and it's still working just fine. It's been three years at least that I've been using this thing. This thing has gone to Disney with me. It has held all kinds of everything. All of my clips still work really well. They're nice and tight. They don't, even in the windiest conditions, I haven't lost any socks or cloth wipes or anything. I've even gotten away with hanging two cloth wipes on each one or even a pair of socks at a time on each one and they dry just fine. It works really well um, and it's got this nice clip on it. If you are line drying exclusively, I heavily recommend it. I got mine off Amazon. If I can find that link, I'll throw it in the description box. <laughs> so listen though, if you're line drying exclusively, you don't have to use just flats and just covers or pocket diapers. You can use all in ones and successfully line dry them. Just keep in mind that you're going to be line drying them before you buy them. There are some all in ones with everything sewn in and those do not line dry well at all. I recommend all in ones with like tongues that you can open up or take apart. But when it comes to all in ones, when you are line drying them, you do have to keep in mind that the weight of the diaper will pull on the elastics. Unlike the pockets or the covers, they usually have some sort of sewn in something that if you don't hang it right, the weight of this, especially when wet, is going to pull on the elastics and you will prematurely wear your elastics. With your all in ones or even with fitted, um, you're gonna have to be careful how you hang them. So it's almost like an art form trying to find a way to hang them to make them work so that they dry timely without wearing them out. Let me give you some examples. First of all, get one of these, whether you're using flats, pockets, covers, all-in-ones, whatever, get one. Because I find these are amazing, especially for all-in-ones because you can drape them and it holds, supports the weight of the tongue. And that way the only thing pulling on the elastics here is just the shell of the diaper. If you use Thirsties, I love Thirsties because they separate theirs into two panels, but if you're line drying, this can be a little bit of a challenge to get dry because those panels wanna lay against each other and you have to kind of like figure out how to hang it so that all of them between those layers and stuff can get dry. Well, the nice part about the drying rack too is that you can separate those layers so you can hang it so that the one inserts in one spot, the other inserts in the other, and the back of the diaper drapes back. And by hanging it like that, all of the layers are separated and it dries really well. This is my favorite way to dry my Thirsty's natural all-in-ones. But if you don't have a drying rack, how can you hang dry it? Well, common sense says you don't want to hang it like this. The weight of the tongues is going to pull on it, and not just that, but those tongues are then hugging each other and they're not going to dry very well that way. I mean, they might dry, but the they're gonna take longer than necessary. And then I have for a while, I hung them on their side, but then you have the issue where these aren't separated. I've tried hanging it sideways before where I took just like the one insert and sort of draped it over the line like that, maybe even clipped it if it was windy and I was worried about it falling. But I still found it was struggle to dry close to where the inserts met the diaper itself. You can hang it this way, this works. I did this on and off for a while, but I discovered it wasn't really necessary. I then tried for a while hanging it by just the two inserts kind of separated. Some people might cringe at the thought of hanging in, uh, an all-in-one just dangling like that because they think that wears on the elastics. But the thing is, there's not enough absorbency here in these shells 
to pull on the elastic. So you, you, the weight of the tongue is being supported by the clothespin and not pulling on the elastics, where this way the tongue is gonna be supported by the elastics and that's not what you want. So you can actually hang them by the tongue. And I've hung all in ones like this before numerous times. In fact, this was my favorite way to hang them for a long time, but then I realized something. Specifically with the Thirsty's natural all in ones, if you hang it by the middle tongue, it actually dries really well just like that. So then I started just hanging them by that middle tongue and that kept everything separated enough that everything dried really well. And honestly, with brands like Diaperate where the inserts snap completely out and it's just a shell, you can get away with just draping it. I usually, because of this front panel can make it kind of difficult for in there to dry. So I actually sometimes, well, I usually invert it when I'm line drying. And then I've even gone as far as opened up the back some and then just flipped it just like that. I have not had an issue with this wearing out my elastics in the three and a half years I've been doing this. So, but if that makes you cringe, there's absolutely nothing wrong with hanging it sideways. I've done that too. Inserts, you can just close pin up, but this is why I love my Whitmore clip and drip because I can just clip the inserts to the clip and drip and the, you know, no matter how windy it is, it doesn't blow down or come off. And actually they're, they're stronger than my close pins are. Really love the thing, especially if you have things with inserts. Real quick mention though, sometimes you have brands like Bum Genius, they're Elementals. This is an older one. They're newer, newer. Their newer ones have the bottom layer that's actually just sewn in and it's all just a sewn in layer. Um, this one's, uh, I think the version two that has the two panels inside and they're joined front and back completely. So you can't open it up. So what do you do in that instance? Because if you try to line dry, you can hang dry on its side because you don't want it to pull the elastics too much but then the layers aren't separated. And it's the same way if you have the version three as well. So what would you do? Well, in the version two or in the version three, whichever, you get in between the inside layer and the panel and you just turn it inside out. What you accomplish by just inverting it like that is now you can hang it on its side and you have one panel in the front and one panel in the back. Or in the case of the version three, you would have the inside lining on one side and the panel, the overlapping panel on the other. From there, you would just clip it on its side and boom, it's ready to dry and it will dry really well just like this. In fact, this is the best way to get elementals to dry. And it's not gonna put wear on your elastics because it's hung sideways. This is one all-in-one I don't think I'll ever hang any other way because there really is no other way to hang it where it would put pressure on the elastics. And Bum Genius is notorious for having elastics that can wear pretty quickly and so to me it's all the more critical to hang these on their side. Now if you are going to hang fitteds, like I said, I mean these are weighty. Um, even the Thirsty's brand, it's still, when it's wet, it'll still pull really hard on these elastics if you hang it like so. So I would never hang fitted by the back or by the front either. I would hang them sideways. Now, if your fitted has the the tongue that is sewn in, then you can do kind of like what I did with the Thirsty, where you just sort of drape it over the line just to kind of keep it separated. No, I have not forgotten about trainers either. A lot of times you have trainers that are, um, that can, they can unsnap, um, they can open up or they're just one piece. This one actually does have, this is an overnight Nikki's, and it does have the snaps in the front, so I could open it up if I want to, but most of the time, it's not opened up. I only need to open it if he pooped, and he usually doesn't. So when it came to hanging these that are just kind of all one piece to let them dry, it's kind of, I think, obvious, but in case it isn't obvious, you would probably just turn it inside out and just hang it by the front or back panel. I found it only necessary to hang it by one side like so. Now some of you may be wondering, okay, well you haven't talked about pre-folds. Well that's because pre-folds are pretty easy to hang. You can make them share clothespins and just hang them corner to corner to corner to corner and they're pretty easy to hang. My experience, pre-folds usually dry pretty well. The bamboo definitely takes longer than the cotton. I prefer the cotton. The 4x8x4 four by four cotton pre-folds dry pretty quickly, probably about as fast as most of my all-in-ones do on the line. So listen, I'm giving tips and advice just based on my experience. Yes, I've been doing this for three and a half years, but I mean, I live in a different climate and I live in different circumstances. I have a strong cross breeze that comes through here, and so I usually have to weigh my rack down. I sometimes have to really clip things in good. That's what I love about my Whitmore clip and drip. It can hold things even in a really strong gust of wind. And I have rain. I have snow. When I'm not lying drying outside, I'm drying in my basement. But the thing is, is during the summertime, my basement's damp because the heat's not on. And because it's damp, trying to get things to dry in a basement with very little airflow and that's damp, they don't. So there have been times where I have been behind on drying diapers because it just weren't dry. There have been times where I, yes, I use all-in-ones and pockets and everything in my stash, and there have been times where 
I look at the weather and it's been four days now of just nonstop rain and it doesn't look like it's going to let up and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have to switch to flats because I need my diapers to dry and I'm going to run out. Fortunately, I have a large enough stash to accommodate for that, but if you have a smaller stash or you plan to start with a smaller stash, make sure you get something you know is going to dry if you're going to be line drying exclusively. And honestly, if your child does not need the extra absorbency of bamboo, cotton's going to be your best bet because it's going to dry quicker. They even hung in half like that, they dry a lot faster than most anything else. If you found any of these tips or tricks or anything to be helpful, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any tips of your own, Drop them in the comments section because me and anybody else watching this video I imagine would be interested in knowing and I'm certainly interested. Thank you for your time, thank you for watching and have a blessed day.